I really think we'll hear something by Friday because if we are bringing in this big time um, visit weekend coming up, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they tried to have at least a couple of those defensive positions solidified. We saw Jonah Hill is at this. Is it a basketball game? That's tonight, right? Jonah, Jonah Coleman. Jonah. I think Jonah Hill said that. Jonah game Hill. Too. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> Let's see how maniacal you are, Jed. Don't let him get off campus without committing to the dogs. I want to start this off just by getting your guys' high-level list of who you've heard from Arizona is likely coming to UW. Or who, like basically kind of the rumor mill. Like what, what are you guys hearing just in, in conversations for who you feel is realistic? QB, uh, future QB1 potentially. Damon Williams. Damon Williams is one. We <clears> talked <throat> about before we started recording Rashawn Clark. Yep. Um, and then we saw Jonah Hill is at this. Is it a basketball game that's tonight, right? Jonah, Jonah Coleman. Jonah I think Jonah Hill said that game, too. Just saying. Jonah Hill might be there, too. We all know. Jonah Coleman. Super bad out here. Hey, Jonah Hill wants a spot. We got one. Uh, <laughs> right? So, starting running back at Arizona. So, uh, we kind of are hearing that he may be up this weekend. Um, and crystal balls are pointing our way. It sounds like, from all that we've heard, it feels like he's ours to lose. We were talking to Jacob Saliga tonight on yeah. Spaces, if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. And uh, he was talking about how he felt like he was ours to lose as well. So sounds like you got a quarterback. He's young. Will he be a true freshman or redshirt? He's a 2024 kid, correct? He's 2024. So obviously, you know, you've got this kid coming in. You're hoping that Will Rogers stays. And I think Noah had some update on that, right, Noah? Yeah, I mean, I, w- I was told this morning uh, by two different people that uh, that Rogers is definitely leaning staying at UW if uh, the No Fafita T Mac thing doesn't come to fruition. Um, I'm not saying that uh, you know one would 100% kick out the other or vice versa. I just think that. Will Rogers is definitely wanting the opportunity to start. And, you know, if Noah Fafita came, he started last year for Jed Fish. I mean, I, I, I don't think it'd be an open competition. So it doesn't make a ton of sense for him to stay if Fafita were to come. But as of today and kind of what we're hearing, it seems like Fafita and, T- and T-Mac, uh, Arizona is making a really big push and their collective is making a really good push to keep those guys. Um, if that was the case, I, I from what I was told, it sounds like Will Rogers uh, is planning on donning the uh, purple and gold. So cool. that's awesome. Mm. Yeah, I was uh, I was told kind of off the record that uh, conversations were had uh, amongst the team where they told the team that they were uh, coming back. So that's awesome. Um, Fantastic. Well, I mean, yeah, the other awesome kid that uh, Will for sure. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Sonny, and I'll, I'll I'll jump in after you. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, I I think Will Rogers brings you as much as I I like Fafita, and I think he played really well. Um, I honestly think that Rogers gives you a better chance to win, um, mm-hmm. just because of you're talking about a, a fifth year player that has been successful in the SEC. Um, I think he's got better arm talent than Fafita and he is mobile. Like, you know, obviously these guys like a more mobile quarterback. He is mobile. Um, he can, he can take off and, you know, get, get out of the pocket pretty easily. And he provides kind of a bigger body that you're kind of going to need to like right off the bat in the big 10. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I, I will say this, if we're going to, if we want to compare the two, I think it's actually kind of difficult because I actually think they're different players. But I will say this. Fida is a uh, – dude, he's lightning in a bottle. He's super exciting. Um, it's pretty impressive to see what Fish and uh, Brennan Carroll and Fafita and T-Mac, Jonah Coleman, all those guys did uh, with Arizona last year. I will say this. A roster being built the way it's being built at UW right now with us kind of – you know, obviously, 
losing so many people and then now trying to build it back. Having the leadership of a Will Rogers, like a fifth year guy who's played in multiple systems, I will say that might end up being like a, a net positive for, for you to. Um, yeah. <laughs> but if you're going to ask me straight up, who would I rather have? I think I'd rather have Fafita, especially because he's a true freshman. He'll be, you know, he'll be a sophomore next year and we'll have multiple years with him. But I do like the yeah, idea I mean, of letting DeMond uh, Williams learn from him for a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Will Rogers. Yeah. Marcus. Yeah. yeah. And then who, I don't, what, do we, what are you guys hearing about that? What do you guys see? Who do you guys hear, hear about that? Uh, the tight end Dorian Thomas, I believe his name is mm-hmm. from Kent. I would not be surprised to see him come here or go to Oregon State. Those would be the two that I would be looking at. I think um, Jacob Saliga, he mentioned that he thought he would end up here too. Um, yeah. But good to know. So is Oregon State probably going to pursue him as well, Matty? I mean, he was committed to Oregon State before Arizona was able to flip him in high school um, or coming out of high school. Uh, they got that late flip on signing day. Or it was like right around signing day that he flipped. Um, that being said, he is an FSP. I think he's an FSP kid. Um, and both FSP and air personnel are like singing the praises of Jed Fish right. and the staff, and they're super on board. I could very easily see um, that reinvigoration and he's a talented kid like he is um i think keon burnett is right. has the higher up but he's also you know a year older um i would ideally given the state of our tight end room i would love to land both yeah yeah if uh if if, if pow pow and fish will take dorian thomas's commitment i would be absolutely shocked if he didn't end up on my lake yeah yeah, that, I think that this, would put us at six if we got both of those guys. So this weekend, we're hearing like there's a huge, like there's going to be a lot of people at UW with connections to Jed Fish in Arizona and whatnot. And who knows if it's just Arizona guys, but I have a feeling you're going to see like a bunch of guys commit. And then there are the dudes who are on the fence may kind of come over. You know what I mean? In the heat of you know, the, seeing their, you know their who the nice commit to us, yeah. You know, there's a nice addition that I kind of like that I, I don't know if anyone's talking about, and I mean, I don't know if it's a for sure thing, but I think he was committed to um Alabama first. Is that Raymond Polito kid? Yes, yeah, he I was, was just about to say that. <laughs> you yeah, said, yeah, yeah, Jacob Saliga said that that kid is gonna get a ton of looks from all over. Yeah, so I pulled his PFF grades because, honestly, his overall PFF grade for the season was trash. But I pulled his by game, and he only played six games. Um, I know Saliga specifically highlighted the UCLA game as something that he did well. That was one of his lower-graded games besides Oklahoma. Um, But against Stanford, uh, what was it? Stanford, Arizona State, and... Uh, I've got it right here. And Utah, he posted uh, 83, 82, and 85 pass blocking grades. So he's got a lot of room to grow in the run blocking from what I'm seeing. But in six games, he only allowed uh, he allowed three sacks, but they were all against Oklahoma. Mm. So and he allowed, he allowed three sacks against Oklahoma in one game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. their line didn't play that. No, it's like you're fired. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't allow a single set. That, those were the only three sacks. And outside of that, he allowed that game. He only allowed two hits on the quarterback and one other hurry. So um, basically the majority of where he struggled. Oh, that's why he played left tackle that game. For Morgan, I mean, they're like Morgan singing his praises in Tucson. Like they love that kid. He's a guard, um, and they shift. They had to shift him out to left tackle. Um, well, that's because Morgan's going to NFL, right? Yep. Yeah, he didn't play in that bowl game. He didn't play in the Alamo Bowl. 
I just caught yeah. that. And that's why I'm sure that's why he struggled. Um, I mean, and interior offensive lineman. So yeah. Uh, so. What, what, what about the edge uh, Harris? Um, Jason Harris, he's a four star, uh, seems to have good size. He's in the portal right now. Is he number like 89? Oh, I'm trying to look him up. He's a 90 right now. He's 6'7", 220. What was his name, Mike? Uh, Jason Harris. Where's he from? Uh, Gilbert, Arizona. Hi, uh, Hingley. Or Hiley Hingley. Here he is. Yeah. Six foot seven. Yeah. Damn. It's long. It's long. Yeah. Uh, they got geez. him crystal ball to Colorado. Oh, wait, what? Hold up. Are we talking about the same guy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm like looking at his... Uh, 2020? Okay, he's a 2020 guy. Yeah. All right. That's is a, is a, when you search When you search this kid on Bing, it's just the, like the search engine I'm using. <laughs> it says, Nathan Harris Football, University of Arizona Athletics. Price range, $8 to $275. <laughs> What does that mean? That sounds so bad. That's some bad. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That sounds so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Price range. I'm yeah. looking at so the, Go ahead. So we haven't heard nothing about him. That's not a name that's been circled. I, I haven't I haven't heard anything on him. Mm-hmm. Um so I will say this. Uh one thing that I've noticed with at least Arizona's recruiting tactics. Again, it's Arizona. We'll see if that this changes. Um they threw out a lot of offers uh, for 2023. For example, they threw out, they offered 265 kids. Um, that being said, they are Arizona. There are some challenges there. Uh, I mean, you're talking about offering everyone from at quarterback from Nico Iamaliaba to Will Pritchard, who, you know, committed to Arkansas state. Um, but they did offer Sam Levitt. I don't know if Sam Levitt has, actually enrolled at ASU. So that could be something to keep an eye on. Hey Stein, um, do me a favor. We put that in perspective real quick. Like, like what is, yeah. um, like what, how many offers did you dub throw out last year? That, cause you're yeah. like, uh, I think a lot of people don't realize that there's some yeah. schools that just spray offers everywhere. And then there's certain schools that Oregon. only offer a few. Oregon was one of those schools or yeah. is consistently one of those schools. Um, so putting that in perspective, I've got to load it real quick. By the way, um, Dorian here, Thomas. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this. Yes. Say that again. Who did? Dorian Thomas. He, yeah, he yeah, committed. He's no Crystal Ball. Oh, Crystal Ball. So okay, you I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Go ahead. Bro. Hey, hold on, hold on, Sonny. No, you're gonna okay. say this real quick. Uh, just to put this into perspective, from like a Peterson era, and then we can kind of move into what, like, from DeBoer. Yeah. Peterson's 2018 or 19 class, he offered uh, 88 kids. Yep. That okay. same class for Cristobal was like 334, 344, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's so, important for people to know because people don't really realize that it's such a discrepancy in the two different styles. Yeah. Go, go ahead, son. Um, so for us, like I said, Arizona offered, or last year offered uh, like 260 kids. We offered 196. So while significantly more than the Peterson era, um, still less than that. But that also means that they have relationships with a lot of different kids um, or a lot of different players across the country. So that could be something to keep an eye on. Um, You know, they offer Jaden Lamar, for example. Um, And I know Jay Sean Lamar is a big fan of, um, from what I've heard, at least, Jay Sean Lamar is a big fan of Scotty Graham. Whether or not he ends up playing uh, running back or linebacker at the next level, um, I know that they were heavily pursuing him. So, um, Brandon Johnson is a kid who's not in the portal that's from Arizona. Um, I'm not the only one that's talked about him, but that dude is lightning in a bottle. He's about 5'11", 190 right now, um, and he's... He's fast. Yeah. And they're thinking he may yeah. jump the portal. I don't know if he will or not. I haven't seen any inkling on it. I actually haven't even asked. Um, but there, he would still be like, it felt like day one today 
or day yeah. two. And it's like they one for days. us. Yeah. I think what Shear and Jason Shear and Jacob Saliga were both saying, um, I know one of the two of them posted on social media about it, but he said they said it sounded like the university like held all of the like portal, you know, basically like a they're going into the portal thing or um their portal paperwork until like the last minute. And that's why we saw like a rush of it at the last minute at the end of the day today. So it's keeping an eye on tomorrow, Friday, and maybe into Saturday as well. Have we heard anything about the uh, the corner Prysock? Yeah, Ephesian Prysock. I was, yeah, I, I was just going to bring him up too. Like, dude, I like him. Say that again, is What were you saying now? I think. A, oh, I was just going to say that I I like that kid a lot, man. I mean. He came in at like 6'3", 170. I think he's more like 6'2", probably like 185, 190. But, dude, I like that. Dude, he is long and rangy. And I feel like, man, he's just gotten better every single year, man. I mean, he's a a showstopper. I think he's number seven on that team. Uh, And I I, I just remember watching him, not having any idea who he was. And he's just just long and lanky, always around the ball. Um, he got a little bit of, um, I don't even know, maybe just cause of his length, a little Brandon Browner, a little bit to him. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that comp. Yeah. I, I mean, like I said, the, the six, two, six, three size sounds really, really good. Um, you know, he's highly rated and it'd be nice to see him come over this way. Do we, do we have any of their defensive staff coming or are we still waiting to hear about defensive staff? So we've hired two, um, Jason Kafusi, who was their outside linebacker, like edge rusher um, coach, is now going to be the defensive line coach and uh, run game coordinator, defensive run game coordinator. And then um, John Robinson, who was their cornerbacks coach, is uh, going to be the secondary coach. But outside of that, they don't have anything else announced. Is it Robinson or Richardson? I think it's Richardson. Richardson. Yeah, it's Richardson. My bad. Richardson. I was looking at Jason Robinson's uh, name. Yeah, yeah, that's Jonah cool. Hill and Jason All right. Robinson. <laughs> no, no, hey, really, really quick. Robinson. I think I think I, I think this is worth noting. Um, obviously, I, I don't. This isn't like inside information or anything like that. But th- this is definitely worth noting. So, if when you look at um, Richardson and Kafusi uh, and kind of looking at you know, what they did at, at uh, like Maddie's talking about, what they did at Arizona and now what their kind of titles are now. Um, it looks like maybe we're just going to have a singular secondary coach. Um, and, and Richardson might just run the whole secondary. Um, and then, it, you know, from a Kafusi, like he was an outside linebacker, now he's D-line. So it maybe seems like there is a little bit of just, you know, maybe only – yeah, kind of consolidation at certain positions. So kind of making maybe maybe Fish saw Richardson was he's a good enough coach where he can take the whole secondary and run that run that whole unit, run that whole back end. Uh, and and what that kind of allows is, you know, there was some rumors that the outside linebacker coach out of Georgia might be interested in the DC position. I think Chidera. Um, yeah, don't, I, don't. About. I think yeah. so. Deribe. Mm-hmm. Something right. like that, yeah. And so it's like, what we call that is, it seems like maybe there are some very um, targeted guys that Fish, you know, kind of has. I, I really think we'll hear something by Friday. That's kind of my thought process. Is I think we'll ha- we'll try to get us a, 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 at least a good idea of who's coming in because if we are bringing in this big time um, visit weekend coming up, I wouldn't be surprised if you know they tried to have at least a couple of those defensive positions solidified. Well, especially if you get a guy that's coming from the SEC or something like that, you never know who's coming with him, you know? I've been hearing his name for a while, even since before KDB left. Yeah. The other so name, I will yeah. say... All right, Stein, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say my other name after you. Go ahead. Uh, I'm hoping I don't say yours before it. So I, I look at it in a slightly different way than... The Noah does. I look at it as they are moving to a different position or a slightly different position 
because of who they're targeting to bring in at, you know, those their those other guys' previous positions. Because Kafusi can can coach but can and has coached both defensive line and edges, kind of just like um, you know, uh former UW great Ikaika Malloy. Um same same situation. So it's potentially that step over but with that title of that run, you know, run game coordinator to potentially allow room for maybe either a co DC or a full on DC. Um, but the way I look at it with like the secondary coach, I could very easily see, I mean, I said this on spaces, but I could easily see um, our defensive coordinator or our co DC uh, maybe not be, have a set position that they're coaching, but have experience in the secondary as well. And that may allude to what uh, Noah's about to, the name Noah's about to drop. The other name I was just going to say is, uh, is uh, I know he's come under some fire recently, but it, he's a, he's a big time football mind been at Michigan since 2015. I like that Chris Partridge guy a lot. I kind of did some research on him. Wanted to really see, you know, kind of what he was all about. Um, he coached with Jed Fish at Michigan. Um, dude, I think he's some, it's a partridge, partridge. It's Chris Partridge. Somebody commented on it. That is actually <laughs> not the name I was thinking of. So are you thinking Scott? Or, I, I'm thinking Carl Scott. Yeah. Carl Scott too. So, yeah. Yeah. No, no get, get, Matt, I'll let you go there next. <laughs> oh yeah. You tell me that guy can't coach linebackers, baby. <laughs> that guy, that guy wants to rip your head off and. Crap down your throat. Oh, Chris uh, Partridge, absolutely. Dude, I just, I, I mean, I just, I love, I love, I just love. He looks like an angry him. cop. <laughs> he does, man. And he was like the fall guy. And here, here's something kind of interesting on him. Uh, do you know that Partridge joined the uh, Alabama staff uh, for for one game? What? Yeah, yeah dude. Uh, yeah, they, they played against, against Michigan. If I remember correctly. He did, dude. So Saban's always one step ahead of everybody. That's what makes him the goat, dude. They hired him for a couple hundred G's just to come in, um, come in for one game to be like an analyst against Michigan. Yeah. Shout out! You to said he comes in. You, you said he comes in with thunder. What do you What do you mean by that? Wait, wait. I did I said that? Yeah, you said he's coming in with some sort of like. Thunder or something like 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 did he do something in trouble or is oh, oh, is he oh, just no, no, no. I, said, I said he comes in he comes in with a little bit of like baggage man like so uh so Chris Partridge ended up being like the fall guy in the whole Michigan scandal you know the cheating scandal uh, right. and they ended up firing oh. Partridge because Partridge air quotes like ended up um uh he ended up having uh. I guess he was like deleting files that, uh, you know, that were, that he wasn't supposed to do. Oh, you're showing this now. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry Nate. See you, Nate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my bad. My bad. Sorry. I don't want to take away. No, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, it, uh, from the so end, me. <laughs> here's, here's, here's what I want to say really quick on that. I have a hard time believing Saban would bring Partridge in for the one game if there was a like serious allegations against him. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like I think that everyone pretty much knows that, that that Jim Harbaugh had to use somebody, fire somebody, and so they fired him. I think that I really do think he's like the fall guy. So that's just my opinion. I mean, give me Chris Partridge at UW. KP. What up, KP? Ball knowers. <laughs> oh, uh, also shout out to Rashawn Clark for uh, quote tweeting the dubbed up. Um, oh, dope. Yeah, he just Same did man. it like 20 minutes ago. The dubbed up post. Wait, um, where's KP at? He's in the chat. KP, oh, what's good, KP? Here, buddy. I would say that this is a fairly good sign for Rashawn. Exactly. Oh, dude, he hit you with a salute too. That's right. I guess I I, I want to go back to this real quick before we get into Carl Scott. I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, this is UW, you know, like, oh, we're we're you know we're big time. But 
Did we just play the national championship 10 days ago, whatever it was? Um, we're about to be in the Big Ten, which is really the big, which is really the only two big conferences in America now. Um, I just don't think at the end of the day, UW's going to, like, if you really think about it, is UW really going to have a hard time filling positions? You're telling me we couldn't go and poach a top guy out of San Diego State? You're telling me we couldn't go poach some studs at the a UTSA? I mean, and, 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 I, and I, I get it. I'm just saying, like, everybody freaking out online. It's like, dude, Jed Fish, if anyone knows how to build a roster quickly, it's Jed Fish. I mean, he's done it. So it's, I just, I just don't think I, I get the excitement of freaking out. I know everyone likes to just have a little bit of drama in their life. I mean, go watch some uh, Housewives or whatever that stupid show is called if you need some drama. Yeah, but I like the drama. Just, yeah, I just think it's yeah, like, like I like that shit. Come on, yeah. You, mind, you mind gonna be fair. <laughs> you gonna be fine, up. dude. We might not be well, winning yeah. the Big Ten next year, but at the end of the day, dude, dude, we'll be a very, very competitive team. Like mark my word. Look, all I hear I, about I think is that, beating Michigan and Oregon next year, yeah. and all and Washington State. Those are three games. Right. Those are, that's all I want. Yeah, those are t- that's. I'll tell you what. If we win those three games, we're right. We're likely winning 10, 11 games if we win those games. I think. I think like it's a couple things. I think because of what happened with DeBoer. The loss, the, all the, that stuff happening literally in a week, there's kind of a stink on us right now. And I think that that is compounded by how quickly the news happens online and how much it starts traveling and then the players leaving. I think that's, like you said, the, once the bleeding stops and especially like um, with the, those ideas we were talking about with the with the transfer portal, specifically in the spring, where we push our – where we possibly push our um, – our spring ball back a little bit and we start collecting those guys that start falling off different rosters for whatever reasons. Um, I think it's just going to be the next few weeks are going to just suck. It's going to, you know, you know, we're going to see some guys leave and um, people are going to be hesitant to jump on. But once I think they start jumping on, you'll start seeing it rolling. I'm just curious to see what, what these guys bring in. I think that's the biggest question is what are they going to bring in? And how big is the step down going to be from national championship game? When's that window open in the spring, Maddie? It's it's end of March, 15th. early April, April, right? Let me look. I thought it was April fifteenth for some reason. Something Tax like day. that. What sketches me out about that time frame is, um, and I saw that. I think it was uh, Softy and Tony were tweeting about it, about mm-hmm. them potentially pushing back spring camp i don't even know how that's possible or what that's all about but you have to be done ap might know this but i think you have to be done like i think uh your spring game has to be done by april 30th that's correct well that that leaves a lot of time because there's a lot of people that are pl- that are playing spring ball all the way in march remember when they spread it out was it last year or the year before where they did a few at the beginning they did like two weeks and then took a two week break and then did it again. I think if they put it at the end and, you know, you get a bunch of those schools that do the early spring practice, um, is going to create some opportunity for them to pick up some guys before they start spring ball. That could, that could work that way. Right. If the, that just extends the window a little bit. I think that's what they were talking about when Tony right. and the, I would assume. Yeah, yeah there it is. Now. April 16th says a chatter. It, uh, is a, Put this up real quick. Hold on, dude. How old do you think this dork is? If I put it in the chat, <laughs> you got, you got, you got to put this up. This is why I love <laughs> doing it this in this format. I know this is kind of new for people. Um, dude, look. Hey Tom. Hey Tom Donaldson. Hey Tom. <laughs> Tommy Donaldson. Shut up, Tom. But like, get with the times, <laughs> pal. Get with the time. uh, spring transfer portal window is April fifteenth through thirtieth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Like I don't, I don't have any harsh feelings toward Tom, but dude, this isn't 1977 in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, kid. Like, get real. 
We're talking about the, the, the player player that, um, that is trying to – And the UA coaches yep. have been talking to UW football. Dude, once they're in the portal swell, otherwise you keep your cheating mitts off our guys. Go Zona. <laughs> yeah. Sing the I'm sure, song. I'm on. sure the NCAA is all over it, Tom. Yeah. Oh, dude, <laughs> yep. I'm sure they really care because that's <laughs> totally going on anywhere else. Come on, guy. <laughs> Big T. Oh, Ain't nobody God. care. Uh, Dude, well, I mean, you have to play by that rule. Mr. Cheesy Fries responded and said, laugh out loud, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so you extend the spring window to get guys enrolled in school. That's the whole reason you do it, says Seattle Rainier. Yeah, I mean, why, I mean, here's the deal. The fact of the matter is, is yeah, I, I don't know when I don't know when the system or with the, with the core system, like when the exact date is up or semester system, blah, blah, blah. But um, going into spring ball, whether the guys are uh, officially on the roster, dude, we'll probably have a really good idea of 80, 82, 83 guys. Yeah. I mean, do you guys feel like you're just signing up for, you know what, this is a rebuild year? Or do you feel like, no, no. screw that. We have Will Rogers. We have Jeremiah uh, Hunter. You've got pieces in place. You're about to bring in Jenna Coleman. You have Cam Davis. Hopefully he's sticking around. I mean, that duo back there, it's just like if the offensive line gets intact to half of what it was this year, three quarters of what it was I, I this feel, year, it feels like I, that I, offense is still dialed. I feel like it's reload. That's what I want to believe. I could be in denial, though. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I mean, it's been a, <laughs> you know, I'm with you on that. Hardcore one. denial. <laughs> <laughs> hardcore I mean, here, here, here. Well, I mean, okay, man, I, me, I, I, it, it, go, for go, it, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. No, no, go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, it's, just, it, it's disheartening because I, I, the, I don't like the, the, the snowball effect that it has if, say, we win seven or eight games coming off of a 14 win season. I don't like the idea of empty Husky Stadium. I don't like that at all because we seem to finally get back over that hump. And when I think about that stuff, you it pisses me off. Yeah. No, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think one of the I want to hold up. I want to flip this back to Izzo real quick. When you ask the question rebuild, I think I think for our listeners, for I mean, heck, for us us four, like, can you can you say what what's the definition of that? What is a yeah, rebuild? I don't know. I mean, to where, like, if you won seven games, you'd be like, don't, I'm not tripping. Got it. So, you look, it's, so, so, so to me, it's really rebuild to me means like bowl game, right? Right. Like, you get to a bowl game. That, that's the way I would say, like, is a rebuild year. But I guess, I guess, and so I, before Stein, goes, I just want to say this. We talked about this on the last, you know, uh, Twitch pod, whatever you want to call these. I'm sorry, bro. You look at our schedule, Weaver State, Eastern Michigan, Washington State, Northwestern, and Rutgers. Let's just talk those five. If you're not getting to seven games, if you're not getting to six games, that means you're losing like six or seven straight. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't start 5-0, I mean, there's a riot. I mean, for real, yeah. though, like that Rutgers game, they got a decent little quarterback, but – Dude, I don't care, man. Like, dude, you should be five and zero, oh, no question. And then, like, I could see us. I could see us winning six games, though, and I think that would piss Husky Husky Nation off in a crazy way. I don't think. Okay, let me ask. Possible. Let me ask this, Mikey. Where Where are you seeing? Okay, let's just say five and zero. Oh, okay, let's just say five and zero. Oh. I think that's fair. All right, five and zero. Oh. I think Indiana okay, is the next and win, oh. and realistically, I could see us losing every other. You're game. talking worst if case we, scenario. If we, yeah, worst case scenario. We don't fill out the roster. We're playing a hella freshman, mediocre who's offensive starting, line. Who's a starting quarterback? I'm trying to do this really fast just because, I mean, we might as well just talk this. Who's a starting quarterback at Indiana? Like, dude, I couldn't even tell you. It's I think uh, the transfer game. from Ohio. He was originally from Canada. He just transferred in. He's, he's pretty good. He's a big dude. He kind of reminds me of... Um, the the quarterback that was playing for Washington for a little bit, he was playing for. He Washington. can't throw the ball, but he's got a slap shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, 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 the dude can ball. Like, don't get me wrong, but I mean, the only person he's throwing to is Donovan McCulley. 
And outside of that, I mean, they got gutted in the portal and they're, they're working to rebuild too, but. So we can call this game a win comfortably. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm way. considering it a win. The game, the game that I don't think is just, is, is just a chalk up win for me personally is I think you're five and oh, I think you're five and two. I think you're going, I think Iowa at Iowa is a tough place to play. I mean. Now it is. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I'll be sure. Depending on how they, they were a top 25 team. Offense. How they look on offense and who they bring in as an offensive coordinator is the true question. Um, I mean, if you don't have weapons get, against them, though, if you don't have weapons against you, they'll beat you. They'll they'll beat good teams. Like mm-hmm. they'll beat you sixteen thirteen. Me yep. three to zero. Well, that too. Yep. But I mean, somehow, but you play know some leather I mean? helmet like, football. So let's just go five and two. Let's go six and two. USC. Mm-hmm. I mean. Bro, I mean, they definitely have more talent than us on paper. Who's their the starting quarterback? Miller Moss or Jaden kid. Mayava. From okay, I mean, Miller. let's just – okay, I'll go six and three there. That's fine. Penn State, six and four. Dude, UCLA, bro, like – They're the only team that beat Kalen DeBoer and didn't – Kalen DeBoer didn't beat them. Yeah, yeah. well, they also have been gutted too. They're losing a lot of talent. They lost a lot of talent. I mean, you got Ethan Garber or Colin place. Schley. I mean, Okar. Does Schley have eligibility left? I thought Schley was a senior. I, I really do. He does. Never mind. Yeah, he's he's got one yeah. I mean, dude, think about how much talk about losing. Dude, their defense loses just about as much as we do. Yeah, it's like all seniors. Or it's a yeah. Lot. I mean, we can't chalk I mean, it up. No, as go, a back that, go back to that. Go back to that schedule, Izzo. Say again? Go back to that schedule, Izzo. So, I mean, I guess the thing is, is like, if you somehow well. got to nine wins, like I would find that to be a huge win for that, for that schedule. Well, let, let, let's see. What would that be then? So, if we were to take those five wins, we would take Indiana, That'd and then maybe, what do you say, us, maybe? SC. So, SC and maybe in Iowa, and that puts us at eight, and then maybe UCLA puts us at nine? Five and oh. Five wins, six wins, seven wins, eight wins would be beating Iowa, Indiana, and USC, or you know, exchange Iowa for Penn State or something. Mm. And then you need. I think if you could get to eight, UCLA, yeah. I'm talking right now, this second, with who we think is coming in, who we think certain positions. If you got to eight and four with where we are right now, yeah, I think that's probably a win. You asked me that on March 25th, I could probably give you a lot better answer. Yeah, no kidding. I and let me ask you this though. How do you guys think Husky Nation though reacts to that? Eight and four with, with what we just went through? I, I was, uh, that's what we just went through, but where we just came from as well. Like going from 14 and one to eight and four is a significant drop. You could potentially make, and and I don't think it's possible, but you could potentially make depending on what the Big Ten looks like, like the landscape of it next year, you could make the championship game potentially with eight and four. I don't know. Like no. it's it's no, that no, yeah. with, that no, being no, said, no. I know is I know Noah said specifically like Mar you know, March whatever. I think we'll know, you know, May. I think there's going to be a lot more in Past year, past couple of years, the late transfer portal window hasn't opened up a lot of, um, I would say, opportunity or hasn't, you know, been like a lot of elite players. I think you're going to see a significantly higher caliber of player enter in the late transfer portal specifically because of the fact that you're dealing with, you know, these late coaching changes and that's going to play a factor as well. Mm-hmm. You're going to have guys that are going to be like, Oh, well I can't get into this school until the, you know, the summer or whatever. So I'm going to wait until after spring or I'm going to see how like certain things in the depth chart shake out. And then I'm going to enter the portal then. And generally those guys that are going to enter like the upper tier guys know exactly where they're going to go or have a good idea of where they're going to go. Um, so I could see this staff that has connections across the country um, be targeting that. So I would say 
realistically, like what our roster may look like in the beginning of June would be where I'm kind of looking at it. But in all reality, I think probably end of May is what I'm looking at it like where I'm going to start judging what our season's going to potentially look like. I guess what I'm trying to say on that, Maddie, is by the time end of May, early June rolls around, out of 22 starters, let's just call it 30 guys that get like 75% of the snaps, like 30, 32 guys, you better, <laughs> excuse me, you better be at like 27, 28 of those guys are already on your roster and you're filling in like four dudes. It for it for elite high players, you know that when I say elite, I mean like four guys that are going to give you seventy five percent type snaps. So oh, it's absolutely. like, so I don't know, man. The other thing too, really quick, is getting Rutgers in Indiana, and honestly Iowa. Like Iowa's good. There's no question. Their defensive their defensive philosophy is pretty elite. Uh, but getting Rutgers, Iowa, and Indiana on the road, and then getting UCLA, USC, Northwestern, Washington State, Eastern, Weaver State. I'm missing one in there. Uh, at home. Oh, the Michigan at home too. That's but dude, there's a possibility there. I mean, you could go, you could go six and one at home. I mean, you really could. Which is huge, I in mean, my opinion. I will say this: if you lose four games, Maddie, back to what you were saying, like, I think all four of those losses would be in conference. Okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't think it's. I don't think that's doable to get into a championship. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'll, I'll, I'll I, think that one, I think that's a stretch. Well, you I know, think, you know. I, I think you're going to see. I think you're really quick, Mike. I think you're going to see in the SEC, and you're going to see in the big, uh, in the big, um, Big Ten. I would be very surprised. Well, I don't know if this is true anymore. I was going to say I think you're going to see some elite teams be at like. Like ten and two to get into the championship, that's going to be like the worst record I think you can have. Is something like that. That could be. True. But go 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 ahead. I, Mike, go I, ahead. I was going to say, you know, one of the things I don't think we're we're actually taking into account. It makes me think back to the twenty twenty one year was um, cohesiveness. Like an offensive line doesn't just gel in a fall camp. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with the a defensive secondary. Positions that are really important where communication and knowing where the guy next to you is that matters. That's what I mean. I'm glad we got a bunch of powder puffs the first three or four weeks of the season. Um, and hopefully that allows us to work out our differences. But when we talk about those big games that are the the tweener games, the like, oh, this could be a win, this could be a loss. That cohesiveness can be the difference between us winning and losing those games. And I, I think we saw that a lot under Jimmy Lake, where there were a few games that season that were just close games. And it was just stupid ass mistakes and not knowing where the guy next to him was supposed to be that cost us those games. Um, I worry about that, especially taking the step up in competition. Like there is double the amount of good team, like really good teams on our schedule this year than there were last year. And um, we don't really, I mean, I think in, in conference, we have maybe three gimmies and then the rest of them. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Sorry. I, was I said, I said, we got three, we got, we got three gimmies that I think are guaranteed wins or should be guaranteed wins. The rest of them, I feel like are really up in the air. And that's why I wonder how getting those late portal window guys in affects that ability, especially if they're offensive linemen, since we're literally replacing the whole offensive line. Did we know that Landon Hatchett was in the portal? He just announced it when we started this. Okay. Yes. Maybe I'm just late. Right. Yeah. Yeah, those ones hurt, man. We've got, like, bottom line is, is, like, you can't get eight guys in the portal from the line, can you? I mean, you can. It's just. I wish there was a rule against guy. it. It's not going to be the guys you want, ideally, but. It, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm not going to read the Hatchet Brothers. Excuse me. I'm not going to read the Hatchet Brothers' minds or know exactly what they're thinking. But I mean, if you read that, you know, you know, this opportunity is understand what is best for me in my college football career. Thank you. You know, it's like to me that kind of reads. Somebody hey, let me see what. Me. Yeah, well, let me see what's out there. Um, 
I mean, dude, you, I, I've said this from the jump, man. You're a hometown kid. You stay with your hometown school, especially with a city like Seattle that has the amount of big businesses and um, alumni network that UW has. Man, it, I'd be hard pressed to believe the Hatchets wouldn't be just fine staying here in here in the greater Seattle area. So, I, I, yeah, like I said, I think it, it's going to be a couple of weeks for for that stink gets off, and hopefully, those guys haven't committed anywhere yet. That's the biggest thing I can hope for. You know, it really sucks seeing Jabbar in the in the transfer portal. Yeah, that one like crazy. him, especially him. Like I saw him rank like, like the number three overall transfer portal player in in America, and it's like, man, he literally blew up here at UW. I wish he. I wish we could get him to stay. I it's wish we so, could get a bunch of these guys to come back. It's so funny to think back at how much flack we got for defending some of these players and where, like, how we were, you know, whining or whatever about where they were rated coming out of, like, coming into the portal or whatever last year. And now when they're portaling out this year to see what they're all rated, like Julius Bulow, Jabbar Muhammad. It's just, it's, you know, Vincent Holmes. Isn't, well, he wasn't one of them, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like, Wait, what was Bulo rated? He's a he's a four star ninety in the portal. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder what Parker is then. One hundred and seven. Yeah, for real. Jordan Shaw. Hold up, scroll, hold up, scroll down to Parker. Where's Parker? If this I don't is anything know. other than a four star, that's an absolute joke. They really like to make this kid look like he ain't player that he is. What a joke. What a joke. Right. joke. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Does it, is there an HS next to it? No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there a team? Oh, it, That's oh, his high it school is, grade. Is. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. He's got it. No rating. He probably he hasn't been about it. To him. Yeah, dude, I, yeah, almost, I, almost, I almost fell out of my chair. I'm yeah, like, wait, was what? Say, what the hell? Oh, bro! You know what? I was I saw it on the message boards when they were talking about him uh, in the Alabama message boards, and they were like, "They don't want him." I'm like, <laughs> "Really?" <laughs> Come back to you, okay. guys, kid. It's insane. They want 365 pound Man. offensive linemen that can't move. I mean, look what he did against the Texas kids, bro. He was he was a beast, an absolute beast against them. You know what's crazy is I think Brailsford with Bulo and Kleppo next to him, they both kind of complimented each other just because I think Bulo and and Kleppo in situations where they were dealing with crazy size up front were really good at helping maintain Parker. But I think Parker was really good at making sure Bulo and Kleppo were in the right place. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he was a real quarterback of the offensive line. And um, I hope they figure out a way to bring him and Jeremy back. God, man, seeing Austin Mack and Jeremy and Brailsford in there is just so, so brutal. No, it's been, I'll tell you what, for being in a national championship game, this has been a very depressing week. Very, very depressing week. I appreciated people like Softy coming out and, you know, doing their little rah-rah speeches. That actually helped a little bit. But, man, this is, bro, this is tough. And uh, Mish Powell, he, I thought he committed to uh, Miami. He did, just yeah, a little while did. ago. Did. Where, did I pass him? He just yeah. updated it. Yeah, that yeah, one I was actually. I wouldn't mind actually playing. Had, actually, had a Miami all year in college. Wow, they only have Mish as a three star as a transfer, huh? And that that, that makes sense. Just that makes saying. sense, just because he's like in between positions. I mean, I want. I'm like actually what? super interested. I'm actually super interested to see uh, what they have, um, Parker. That's like super interesting to me. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he'll be at least a mid four star. He better be, dude. He's, I'm yeah, thinking he was like a freshman All American. 93, 94, 95. Like, I'm being He's serious. He's the second that. highest rated, graded center in the Pac 12 as a redshirt freshman playing two games at guard. Just to give you some perspective on how bad. Like the glance over ratings of, you know, of what a network can provide you. Yeah. In 87. Dude, I still remember the game that Parker Brailsford played uh, 
against Lucas, the big five star D tackle out of uh, that went to Texas A and M, and then he ended up going back to USC. Oh, and, Bryant, you mean? No, I think it was Lucas, man. Something Lucas. Last name was Lucas. I, I thought, thought the uh, I thought the defense the defensive tackle for for USC kid from Georgia. You talking about Bear Alexander? No. Bear, oh, that's what it is. Or are you talking about um, the Michigan State game, Abraham Luke, or not Abraham Lucas, but uh, Lucas here. Anthony Lucas? Why were yeah, you Anthony Lucas him? is he in the portal? He's from. No, bro. What I'm saying is, Anthony Lucas played at Chaparral, mm-hmm. and uh, and they had a, Chaparral played uh, Parker Brailsford's team, and they went one and one, like one v one all game, because this guy played like right defensive end. And uh, Parker played left tackle in high school. And I think Lucas ended up having one tackle in that game. Oof. Yeah, he completely Parker, shut like Parker, Parker shut him down cold. And uh, there's actually like a funny story. Like I think Blair and Guillo wrote something like, Anthony Lucas shows out in like, you know, primetime game versus, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like <laughs> nothing against these guys, man, because I know they got a hard job. But sometimes I just wonder like, Hey man, you know what does this guy look at? Look like at a seven on seven camp. Dude, Jordan Cobb, he's, he's he he got all those guys. I mean, he's listed as the recruiter. I don't know how many of them yes. he's actually gotten. He was the primary on. A, he was the primary. Keep he was saying it. Cobb was the primary on a lot of guys that weren't like in the tight end in room. his position. Dang, yeah. bro, look at some of those names, dog. Keep look, scroll down. Dev. Oh. Yes. Oh, Troy Fotanu, Dom Hamp. It's because oh, uh, yeah. well, Arizona you, was uh, his stomping grounds. He and man. Huff cleaned up mm-hmm. in Arizona. The goat. I was gonna say it, 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 it looked like he got a lot of the poly players too. The goat, yeah. Drew Sample. Let's go. The goat. Hey, he's still a Drew very Sample, productive, productive a, tight end in the NFL. Yeah. Is a uh, Drew Sample was at the um, Purple Rain tailgate. And I, uh, I, I, I say what's up to him real quick. And he was in his, uh, he was rocking his uh, 2016 college football playoff uh, like zip up. That. That was dope. Dope. I said, I, I, I was like, dang, Sam, you ain't got no U Dub gear. He's like, dude, you got to rep what you got. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get him a visor now. Bro. Bro. By the way, I'm serious. Dub Dub visor. Dub, dub, dub visor is coming I'm soon. I'm seriously baby. rocking the Dub Dub visor this year. Backwards, upside down, uh, with the bleach blonde hair spiked up in sync. So you're going full Eminem on them, huh? No, full this, is, this is like JC Chavez from NSYNC style. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm curious to look at how do we look at by coach recruiting rankings? I don't um, know. Uh, we, we don't have to do my recruiting rankings. You can, but you so can what I would do on those guys. What I do is I Google guys. them and then type in two four seven at the end, and it should show them, um, like who they who they got. Who's the who's the yeah. DBs coach that we just got? What's his name? Oh, Richardson. Richardson. John Richardson. Yeah. Is it, is it Rich? G- not Jason Richardson. What am I doing here? Johnny Rich, John Richardson, John Richardson. What's his first name? Jay. Wow. John. John. Okay. Sorry. I wasn't hearing you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Twitch, baby. Uh, John Richardson, 247, Arizona. See, he so he at, doesn't I'm have. I'm sure he used to be at Wazoo too, right? He was at Wazoo and then he was at um, Wyoming before that. I remember wanting to pretend I didn't hear that. Played. Yes, I remember one. I remember liking Stacy Bay a lot. Yeah, Stacy. So Stacy Bay is a dude that I hope decides not to go to Arizona. That's how I'm going to say it. They get he, he. I love. Look at the height. Six four, six feet, six one, six three, six foot. He's but got a tight lineman, but still. there's a there's a certain cornerback that committed to uh, USC. That I that is in that same mold that I would love to see on Mont Lake if oh, he yeah. ever enters. I would see, did that go out the door with KDB. Is my question. Um, 
probably not considering his former high school teammate plays for UW. I hope you're talking about a former UW player. No, I'm talking about Malachi Crawford, who's a DB oh, at okay. UC, or at USC. I was, I was thinking of the other kid. I thought, uh, the, the kid who's a senior right now, or going into his senior year, the, the five-star DB. What's his name? Yeah, what? Not Damani Jackson. No, yeah, no, no. no. Who's the kid that we were rumored um, potentially? Dijon Lee. Lee. Yes, thank you. Oh, Dijon Lee. Oh, I'd assume that's huh? Oh no! You know who his number two school, like one of his like top three schools, were Arizona, Arizona baby. You know where where he just visited Arizona baby. Oh my god, dude! If that still was in the works, because this kid was, and I said this before, he was like borderline ready to commit after the Oregon game. I'm gonna tell you right now, our 2020. Our 2025 class is going to be nasty. If well, like, it's just it, man. nasty. Also, there are a couple of dudes that I want from that are not in the portal yet. And I'm just going to say this like straight up and it's probably going to blow back on me. But I really don't care. Um, but I have a list of guys. Genesis Smith. He's a okay. true freshman about to um, play a lot. UW recruited him. Not heavily enough. 6'2", 200. Can make plays. He's fast. Came out of Chandler. Um, went to Hamilton. Um, he's a dude. Who is it? Uh, Isaiah Ward. Is another de- he's a defensive lineman. He's a dude. Um, who else? I got like a, he's like a borderline safety... I forgot Derek about Jordan Shaw. Shaw. I like Jordan Shaw. I thought he played pretty well at Indiana in spurts as a true freshman. Um, I like his upside. I like his film when we were recruiting him kind of again, hesitantly. Um, and he's forgot the- Emmanuel. Carney. Yep. He, he's we're back in the portal. Yeah. Um, Emmanuel Carnley. We were recruiting him for a little bit. Um, so these are dudes that like, yeah, we ended up with like Leroy Bryan. We ended up with Caleb Presley. We ended up with Curly Reed, um, which Dude, I think loved, this team, him. I think Carly early in the corner. I remember this. You guys remember? Do you remember that? We loved this guy early. You no, know, it's Carly. crazy. When, you, when we started rattling off those names, there's some like actual real talent still. In the cupboard, there like those those guys are all four star mm-hmm. guys, yeah. And they That's have a year about I mean, they, down there, yeah. You know they they have a year in this uh, of of college football now. Like I wonder if it's realistic at all to think like a Caleb Presley and a Curly Reed could be playing significantly this year coming up because it doesn't seem like we have much more of a choice. Yeah, I think I think Leroy is your first chance to start, but it all depends on like schematically and, and who he brings in curious to see how um, EJ takes the next step because he yeah. does fit that kind of same mold that they're looking for so in their corners. Kind of too. Yeah. Yep. That, um, Here's the thing that we got to really think about before we get too deep into like, especially from a secondary perspective, you know, the, the new defensive coordinator, I mean, is he going to be a zone? Is he going to run zone? Is he going to allow his guys to just be on his, his cornerbacks to be on an island? You know, what, what is that really going to look like? And I think that's why I think it's so vital to get somebody in uh, sooner rather than later. And obviously, you know, Jed Fish is going to have a certain idea what he's looking for. So he probably already knows, you know, the guys on his list, but you know, there's certain players. I mean, like Mish Powell is a great example. We talked about him earlier. You know, if all of a sudden you dub would have, you know, been like, yeah, we're definitely going back to like zone concepts like we saw with Jimmy Lake. You know, that kind of bodes well for Mish Powell. But if we're still going to stay with like, hey, put these guys on an island, let them athlete up, be like mano y mano, you probably see a lot more, you know, flip the hips, rangy, rangy cornerbacks that can get up and go over the top. So there's a little bit different mindset, uh, you know, with what with what we're planning on doing. You said there were names. When you need them. 
you, you guys are going to get into the Carl, what was his name? Um, the other, oh, the Carl Scott. Scott. Carl Scott. Yeah, we, we so never Carl get into Scott him. is another name I've heard um, mentioned and then am pretty intrigued about. He's currently the defensive passing game coordinator for the Seahawks, or he was this past season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he previously was a uh, cornerbacks coach or defensive backs coach at Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota for the Vikings, Bama. and then yeah, yeah he, was, he was, the was there for Bama. Bama. Yep, yep. So I mean, the dude is a mo- was a monster on the trail. Again, granted, it's Bama, so you have to take certain things with a grain of salt. But um, you know, that would be something that I personally would like to see. Um, I think he's capable of. Being maybe a co DC, have and maybe you, you see have, a situation. I was sorry, Manny. I was going to ask you: Have you heard like what? To what extent have you heard chatter on him? Like just this. I is just heard that he was like? named to watch. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, dude. And Carl, positive Carl Scott got Carl Scott got Patrick Sertan and Kool Aid McKinstry. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, who's our running? Sorry to bounce around. Who's our running back? Running backs coach. Scotty Graham, baby. Yeah, that I want dude. to see who he Carson is. Cox, you are a Husky next year. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that I want I want him. Carson Cox is legit. Yeah. What'd you say? Um, what'd you say, Stan? Oh, I said Carson Cox, you are a Husky next year. It's I guess what the heck? So he's only gotten he must not have been there for a very long time, or is he a newer coach? Scotty Graham? Uh he's been a, he's been around for a minute, but I don't know why. Like I looked on 247 and the same thing. It didn't really show that he had like any commits. I mean he doesn't have a lot of coaching history. I think this was like a trust me situation from the guys we had talked to in Tucson about like just him as a recruiter. Well, and didn't the running back that they had that played last year, he was a uh, Coleman, right? He didn't he have like fifteen hundred total yards or something like that from scrimmage. Like he was a he was a guy. Yeah, and he was an under I don't know that he recruited him though. Oh whoops, what am I doing here? Bouncing all over the place. Yeah. And then yeah, you got who was what was, all what was the, getting like accounted for is Sefo. Yeah, I thought I thought we saw earlier. I thought <laughs> um excuse me. I thought Jordan Pow Pow recruited uh, Coleman. Did we see that? Oh, that's right. I thought, I th- I thought we did. I thought I saw that. What was the uh, Georgia guy's name again, you said? The possible DC? Um, yeah, I've got it. His up. name is difficult to pronounce. I can't remember. It's Shadera Musa Jaribe. Yeah. It's not that hard. It's playing. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm I'm to be fair, I'm I'm pretty good with like names and what I don't completely um, Dude, I actually feel like I remember him at Colorado too. I like, what year is that? Like 2000, like 2011 I too. I think he played did he play for the Saints? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's see if he got I don't think he did. Keep going. Because he would be one thing to remember too is that some of these dudes, like 247, like that, it's kind of inaccurate to say, like, oh, they got these guys and they got these guys because in all reality, like they may not have gotten them. Um, for prime example, like we talk about, um, you know, an okay Brechter field, for example, like, or you talk about a who else. Uh, we talk about Juice and say, like, oh, well, he got Jabbar. Well, from what we've been told is Courtney Morgan actually played a major role in, in Jabbar. Like, in landing Jabbar. So, you know, what does that say? So it's it's a little bit misleading. I will say, based on just some of the guys that they were able to land, um, I mean, they were in on a lot of, they were in on a lot of guys. Like highly talented guys in 2023 and this year until late. And I think NIL definitely played a role in it. But I also think just in general, it's 
Arizona, some of these dudes, I mean, you're talking about like, um, they committed to like other, like to big 10 schools, for example, you liked Malachi Riley. If I remember Matt back in the day, I did. Um, he hasn't really gained any weight from what I've seen. So, but I did. Yeah. And he was, he was a 2023 commit for them I'm trying to think of who else. But yeah, I mean, if you look at their offer list compared to like our offer list for 2023, it overlaps so much. Same thing with 2024 and 2025. Mm. Man. I but I, I hate to say it, but I think they were actually doing pretty damn well with, uh, I think they were doing a little bit better than we were with certain positions for the 2025 class that we yeah. were targeting. Yeah. So I'm going to keep a very close eye on that. Izzo, if you, uh, if you pop in the chat real quick, uh, you'll see, uh, click on uh, Jonah Coleman real quick. I just hit it on the bottom. You guys will be you guys will be happy with this. Click on, scroll down. Keep going right there. Up, oh, no, no, you're good. Go down. Up, oh, right there. Arizona enrolled, recruited by Scotty Graham. Oh yeah, interesting. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Here we go. We were on the wrong Scotty Graham. Coach Fish is uh, tweeting right now. He's oh, posted he? a couple tweets. Last hour, yeah. Come on, fish. Ask Let's go, baby. Ask him if he's trying to get, ask him if he's trying to get in the twitchy verse. Yeah, come here, bud. Yeah, yeah, come talk. Uh, advisor on you know, from the from the Arizona um, staff website from before they removed him. But uh, Graham played a key role in building Arizona's 2022 signing class that ranked second in the Pac-12, uh, and included. The, the first five star signing in program history. Um, he has extensive player development experience at the collegiate and NFL levels, is a senior associate AD for student athlete development and the welfare at Arizona State. Um, he was in the NFL PA, spent six years at ASU, um, basically worked with the NFL PA. So he kind of like was out of coaching, coaching. Um, which kind of adds like another aspect to it. But yeah, I mean, he also was a running back at Ohio state um, and a team captain his senior year. Who's this? We'll see. We'll see. Dude, Jordan, Jordan Washington. He's nice, bro. Yeah. I saw that. 10 to 400 meter. Yeah. He's a burner. He's a running back or receiver. Running back. You can do both, but more of a running back. Look at him. Damn. <laughs> These are a little high. Gets his shit. Dude, that looks like, that you, looks like my that looks like my high school tapes. You can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yo, hey, look, at wow, that big boy. Yeah. look at that big boy. Look at the big boy running with him up the sideline. Hey guys, can I can, can I ask y'all a question? Because uh, you know, Please, we, yeah. we we did we definitely had like kind of a rough uh a rough last couple of weeks. What's your pettiness level at right now? I've been watching, you know, we've been watching our, our line or our uh, roster get just dwindled down, but same things happening to KDB in, in Alabama. Uh, if you were going to rate your pettiness level from a one to a 10, where is it at right now for you guys? <laughs> That's a great question. I was just looking at it and I was like, you know what? I saw your reaction earlier on Twitter, actually, as and it made me laugh. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it made me feel this morning. It, it made me. It made me feel this much better, bro. It, it, it was not much, but it was this much better. And I, I, I mean, needed I'm it. It was a long day. Definitely going to be petty, but I mean, it's more of just like you got to laugh through the pain right now. And if there's a if there's an area to laugh at him, I'm going for it. I mean, what is success, right? Like we talked about it earlier, you know, like what's a rebuild? Like what what does a rebuild look like? For some programs, man, if you go eleven and one and miss the SEC championship, dude, that's like that's that's unsuccessful. You know what I mean? And uh, it's it's just interesting because if you really start breaking down like what was successful in college football this year, the two most senior laden teams were UW and Michigan, and we played each other in the national championship. Good point. Yep. So it's well, like, I, but, great point. I think what we covered though was we talked about you know we think eight and four nine nine and three win season we'd be kind of happy with that but how is 
Husky Nation going to react to that? Because a lot of people, yeah. you know, they they follow football a lot more casually than we do. And so when they see a team drop off like that, do they start? Do they stop coming to games? I think this year we- created a lot of fans that aren't going to be like that aren't going to just w- completely waver. Like I think some will, but the super casual eyes. But like for instance, you know, I've got family who you know, wasn't necessarily super diehard this year. And I think this year made them diehard to where if they won eight or nine games next year, they would stick it through. Bro, I was at the I gym yesterday. Yeah. Check this real quick. I was at the gym yesterday and there was three guys on the on the uh, treadmills behind me. Dude, they all were rocking UW gear. Yeah. yeah. I was at, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm here in Boise and I was at the, the tubing hill and uh, ironically, there were like two other parents. One was a Michigan fan. And then the other one, I got to go dogs. And I'm like, I'm in mean, Boise, Idaho. Like they were like, yeah. yeah, you guys did really well this year. And even the, like the Michigan fan, he was like, yeah, it was a, it was a tough game for most of it. And I was like, yeah, it was. The only thing I'll say really quick is, uh, what was the term they used Jed fish as like a man, a maniac recruiter or a man, yeah, something cool. like that. Maniacal, maniacal, maniacal recruiter. Recruiting. All right, so so here you go. I'm going to say this right here. Let's see how maniacal he is, because if we have the amount of visitors this weekend that we're hearing, like we're supposed to be having, let's see how maniacal you are, Jed. Don't let him get off campus without committing to the dogs. Don't be stopped about that. <laughs> yeah, get I will five. say this, like. Yeah, get no, get five, get six, well. get seven. You know, get 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 some commits, man. Let's see how maniacal you are, man. Where you, you know, saying, Matty? If, if, if I was gonna say, go ahead, Mike. I was gonna say, you know what? Even if we are uh, only a seven or eight win team, at least NCAA twenty four is coming out, and where the UW, where you dub in my household is always undefeated, so I can live <laughs> with that. <laughs> yeah. What were you gonna say, Maddie? I was going to say, um, you know, they, they were able to pull some, some pretty decent moves. Yeah. They were flipping from like smaller tier programs, i.e. like Stacy Bay, for example, but their close rate was pretty good. And they were a lot more ag- from what, you know, we've heard and, and G's talked about it too, is they're a lot more aggressive. That staff is more aggressive in terms of like closing. Right. Um, you know, he talks about the um, basically like the closing room and stuff like that that he has, um, or that he had at U of A. Like that could realistically be. I'm sure he'll utilize like his office as that. Um, but that's something from a recruiting standpoint that does actually matter. And if you're a little bit more aggressive than passive. Um, you're going to close better. Right. All right, man. I think, yeah, it'll be good. On that note, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for hopping on here. We'll do this as frequently as we can. We're going to try to do this at least once a week. We'll chop this up into a couple videos, breaking out segments. um, And hopefully I will do that tomorrow and then have some of these videos out here in the next couple of days. But, uh, if it was your first time joining us tonight, like really appreciate you guys coming in here and, and talking dogs with us. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Go dogs, baby. Go dogs. Go dogs. Good shit. Always fun. <laughs>